You're a useless nobody. Absolutely no good. <laughs> the devil is a liar. Aren't you sick and tired of listening to the lies of the devil? In this video, we're going to continue to expose the lies that the devil tries to convince us of. Check this out. Praise God. Greetings to all of you and welcome to Digital Disciple Ministries. We're continuing the video series, Discipleship Daily. And in this video, we're going to continue to expose the lies of the devil. I started a video series exposing the lies of the devil to help us to get familiar with the lies, to recognize when the devil is lying to us, so that we can counter the lies of the enemy with the word of God and stop falling victim to a devil's lying mentality. A lot of us right now probably are under the influence of a lie that the enemy has told us, maybe a lie that we've told ourselves, something that we've believed that goes contrary to what God is teaching us in his word. We want to take all of those lies and expose them. We want to cast down every single lie that the devil has told us. We want to cast down every single lie that has exalted itself in our mind against the knowledge of God. We want to bring every thought into captivity, every lie that we've believed so that we can truly be free. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. And the only way to do that is to start getting rid of the lies. Praise God. So again, we're going to continue exposing the lies of the devil. In the last video, we talked about the lie that God doesn't love you. So if you haven't seen that video, go and check that out. It'll bless you. It'll help you in your walk with God to tear down the strongholds of the enemy's lies. In this video, we're going to talk about the lie, you are useless, or you're no good, or you're a nobody. That is a lie that the devil would love for you to believe right now, totally robbing you of your purpose. The devil doesn't want you to think that you're special. The devil doesn't want you to think that you can be effective. The devil doesn't want you to think that anything you do is worth anything in the kingdom of God. He wants you to feel helpless and hopeless and worthless. That's what the devil wants you to think about yourself. That's what the devil wants you to feel so that you will be rendered ineffective. But we're going to expose the lie. The lie that the devil tells us that you're useless or you're nobody. That's not true. You are somebody in God's eyes. And we're going to get into the Bible to dig up some scripture to help us to ingrain the word of God in our hearts so that we can have the right mindset and we can have the right thinking in pursuing what God is calling us to do and in being who God called all of us to be. So let's get into the word of God here. First of all, let's establish the fact that the devil is a liar. And John 8, 44 tells us that. I'm reading from the KJV, but you can follow along with whatever version you have or whatever version you're comfortable with. Ye are of your father, the devil. What a strong rebuke from Jesus. And the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. The devil is a liar. Let us not believe the lies of the enemy. The devil wants nothing more than to deceive you into believing that you're no good, that you're nobody, that you're useless, that God cannot use you in the kingdom. The devil would love for you to believe that. Let's not give him that courtesy. He is a liar 
and he wants to deceive every single one of us. The Bible tells us Jesus gave a strong warning about the enemy's intention to deceive. This is what Jesus says in Matthew 24, verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. The devil would like to deceive you through the voices and mouths of other people. People that are teaching false doctrines. People that don't really know the word of God. And they're just speaking from their own ideologies and their own experiences. But what they're saying really doesn't match up to what the Bible teaches us. We have to go to the Bible as the source. We have to let the Bible define us. We have to let the Bible tell us who we are because this is God's word to his people. Praise God. You are not useless. You are not a nobody. You are a somebody exposing the lies of the devil. Here's some scripture that will help you. You are not an accident. You were not an accident. The Bible says in Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. God expected you. You're not useless. You're not a nobody. You're not nameless. You're not lost. You're not some Joe Schmo. God knows your name. He has a plan for your life. This is God showing you that his plan for you was calculated, strategized. He thought about it. This isn't just something that God threw together at the last minute. No, God planned your life out and he has a purpose for you and a reason for your existence. Glory be to God. Let's go into some more Bible. Scripture shows us that we are royalty. We are holy and we are a special people to God. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 says this, But ye are a chosen generation. You were chosen. A royal priesthood and holy nation. A peculiar people that ye should shew forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. You were chosen to give God glory and to bear witness of his power, to show forth the praise of God. What does that mean to show forth the praise of God? I mean, what has God done in your life? Did he deliver you from drugs, alcohol? Has God blessed you with a good job? Has God given you a wife? Has God blessed you with children? Did he bless you with a house? Did he bless you with a car? Did he heal you? Did he set you free? What has God done for you? Whatever God has done for you, that is a praise. In my example, I've been set free from drugs and alcohol, amongst many, many, many other things. So I can show forth the praise of God as my deliverer, as my redeemer, as the one that set me free. So you are royalty. God has chosen you. You're not an accident. You're not a nobody. You're not useless. You have a purpose and a reason for your existence. And it's more than what the enemy wants you to believe. Let's go to the next verse of scripture. Children of God. That concept right there by itself, if you just, if you unpack that, if you selah on that, if you meditate on that and think about all of the dynamics, all of the possibilities, all of the billions, trillions, quintillions, sextillions of things that that could mean a child of the living God. First John chapter three, verse two. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, 
for we shall see him as he is. You have a destiny to be like Jesus. What greater promise, what greater purpose, what greater blessing could there be to be like Jesus? All the things that we read about, the great love that he had, the tremendous courage that Jesus exemplified. What a blessing, what a promise to be like him. You are a child of God. The creator of heaven and earth is your father. And God, as your father, is going to take care of you. You have a purpose as a child of God. And if that's not enough, let's go to this next one. This next one is deep. Think about this right here. Jesus took our punishment. He paid for our sins in his own body. He endured the wrath of God against sin. He bore the judgment of God in his own flesh so that you and I don't have to experience that. He was sinless, but he became sin for us because he loved us so much. Isaiah 53 verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. They beat Jesus to a bloody, unrecognizable pulp. And he did that. He endured that to pay for our sins. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes ye are healed or we are healed. Jesus took a horrific beating. I mean, a punishment. Not only did they beat on him with their fists, not only did they break his body open with a cat of nine tails and shred his flesh, but they crucified him. And Jesus did that for you. Who would do something like that for a nobody. Now, obviously, in God's eyes, you have tremendous value. You're not useless. You're not a nobody. God has a plan for you. And in order for you to be a part of his plan, in order for you to become a child of God, he paid the ultimate price with his life. When we meditate on these scriptures, when we begin to think about what God has done, we can use these verses to counter the lie of the enemy saying that, hey, you're useless. You ain't nobody special because the Bible that I just shared with you absolutely begs to differ. So child of God, cast down the imaginations and capture the thoughts that tell you that you ain't nobody, you're useless. Bind those thoughts and renew your mind with the truth of God's word. I pray that this has blessed you. May the grace of God be with you all. Till we meet again in the next video. Peace.